What's up fish lovers? Today we're going to be looking at plumbing this tank. We're going to be looking at making a DIY filter for it. Running over here. Something that runs about 1500 gallons per hour is a maximum rate, but I'm going to be running at about four to 600. That's pretty low flow rate for something that's more than 200 gallons, but I've got a huge drip system running in the back. So there's a lot of water change over here. I'm using this strictly as a mechanical filter really to keep things clean. I'm going to have biological media in it, but it's not really going to matter whether it does anything or not because that's just how I run my tanks. When you're sizing a hole saw, what you want to look at is how well it fits on your actual bulkhead fitting. So what you want is something where it slides in, but the threads do not. This is a half inch internal diameter bulkhead. This is a 32 millimeter hole saw, which I think is an inch and a quarter. I don't see that on here anywhere, but I don't think they sell them as millimeter here. Uh, but that's the best fit type that I've had, and that works with every size that I've tried. Put some masking tape over the inside and outside of the surface that you're going to be drilling through. This gives you a nice clean edge. If you just go straight through the wood, you're going to end up with a jagged edge. It's going to end up causing tears, especially on the side. So if you put a layer or two of masking tape over it, go through until the drill punches through and then start from the other side. Again, masking tape inside. You get a perfect edge. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this and show that to you. Uh, this is something, you know, the masking tape's like a dollar, but it makes a big difference. Saves you a lot of headache and resealing things and cracks and things later. Here, now that it's done, the uh, tape is a little bit jagged. But the wood underneath is pretty much perfect. There's a little bit of a push out from the inside. So it looks a little rougher than it is, but there's absolutely nothing at all on the finish. And this is what you want. This is the reason it's worth taking a little bit of extra time to do this. When you put your bulkhead in, make sure that your rubber gasket goes to the side where the water is. You should be able to screw this on now. And this is generally a two-hand thing. I just cheated and put a little bit of tape on the inside so that I'm able to hold the camera while I do this. And that's it. That's a watertight seal. Two options for connecting this. You can either, if you've got some spare silicone left, put a big glob of it in here around it and push it through, making sure you keep this hole clear. Or you can use a more permanent option and use PVC cement. Now, this purple stuff is primer. It makes sure that the plastic on the inside is clean and it makes sure that it's a little bit pliable so that the cement can get a better grip. This will stain everything that it touches. So if you have sealed your wood, uh, if it's anything but black, be very careful with this. Just apply a little bit. Go ahead and wipe the excess away so that I don't have trouble later. So you want to make sure you prime both sides. I guess I am holding this with my foot. And these cans leak like crazy if you don't get them super tight. So it's worth making sure that you're someplace where it's not going to ruin everything. You know, this floor is already gross. I don't care that that happened. The cement itself. There are multiple types of cement. Uh, most of them you will find are strictly for PVC and they are clear. This is an all-purpose. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure if this is PVC or CPVC or what. So I got the all-purpose because it is reusable. You don't need a whole lot. In fact, this is too much. You can see it's running down the inside. Okay, then you want to quickly 
assemble your piece and give it a 90 degree rotation to make sure that you have a good even distribution of the glue. It will set very quickly. So if you want to clean up any of the excess, now is the time to do it. Next thing we're going to need once we have our out inlet and outlet plumbed in our tank is we're going to need our actual canister. So for this I'm going to be using a 5 gallon food safe bucket and this gamma seal lid. Now this lid comes with the screw in section and this lip and it runs about six to seven dollars at the hardware store. You can find it usually in the paint aisle. This is an airtight seal lid. We don't need it to be airtight but we do need a good enough seal that the water pressure going into this is not going to cause leaks. So the way that I'm going to be plumbing this, I'm aiming for about 800 gallons per hour. So I'm going to be using two half inch tubing pipe inlets. Uh, gravity flow through a half inch tube lets it do about 420 gallons per hour. So into this, through the lid, I'm going to be doing one on each side here because I have a huge amount of half inch pipe. I have a huge amount of half inch bulkheads. So that's what I'm gonna be doing because it's what I have. On this one, I'm gonna want it to be removable. So since I'm still gluing the pipes in, I'm gonna make sure that the piece that the pipe goes in is on the outside. After plugging up the hole, you can use the same thing as you did for the top, a flat straight piece bulkhead. And you know, they, they make uniseals and things like that, but they really aren't necessary unless you're just drilling into this bottom lip because this is pretty soft plastic and it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to flatten it out completely. And this one, I am going to be putting the gasket on the outside. This is because of the curve, I'm going to be able to get a little bit of a better grip with this gasket if it's pushed into the outside of the curve than into the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this in real quick. Filter media is pretty easy. What I've got is just a red bucket that I picked up from the dollar store. I had to cut the rim off of it to make it fit, but this gives me a little bit of room down at the bottom for everything to settle so nothing gets sucked into the intakes. I've got a whole bunch of these little plastic pot scrubbers down here. On top of that, I've got some of these awful plastic sponges, the ones that aren't really absorbent at all. They, they have a really good flow rate through them. And on top of this, I've just got some filter floss that I stuff in to act as a water polisher. And that's it. I've got the lid here. See, I've put on some quick releases, and on my areas coming out of the tank, I've got some tubing. I'll have to replace this with a braided because it's a little floppy, but I'll do that later. Uh, so I've got a shut off here. I've got the actual screw ins. So this goes on the other side of the bucket. I've got two exits just to do a little bit higher throughput. I've got a shut off here, the pump, and it runs up to my tank where I've got it running through, so that you can see it, there it is, a grating to keep things from swimming back in. It also helps to aerate the water really well. Let me get this uh, on real well. I'll get it turned on and I'll go ahead and show you how that works. A huge amount of aeration happening on the inside of that nozzle as it comes out. This is on the lowest setting because I want to give the bacteria a chance to really colonize this a bit before I start blasting it. So I'm going to leave this on the lowest setting for a few days. Now you can see I've already got some fish in here. There's not very many. You may be saying, hey Steven, I thought you weren't supposed to be doing fish in cycling. Isn't this going to cause them problems and make them sick with the ammonia? And normally that's something that is true and it's something that you want to watch out for. But the white PVC right here is flowing about 80 gallons a day of clean water through this tank. 
So this thing is getting a 30% daily water change. Uh, there's a platy, six mollies, and a significant number of babies that, uh, I'm assuming those are baby mollies, but there's not really any bio load on this at all, being a 220 gallon tank. So there's not any danger of ammonia buildup or anything else. Uh, there are a fair number of plants like this that do column feeding, water column feeding. Uh, the wisteria in the back does that also. The moss obviously does that. So there's a lot of stuff in here that wants to eat ammonia. There's not very much stuff that produces ammonia. I'm going to actually have to add some fish to this in order to even get this filter to cycle because as soon as I throw in my bacterial additive here, it's all going to starve to death if I don't have something significant in here actually producing enough waste for it to eat.